a newly published Greek fragment of the Gospel of Mark. An opinion of Dr. Galen Curra, November 2018. In the first century CE, Greek remained the main language of international communication in the Near and Middle East. That is why the accounts or gospels of Jesus' life, teaching, death, and resurrection were composed, copied, and circulated in Greek from the middle of the first century CE. However, of the four best gospels, that attributed to Peter's son Mark remains the least well attested. That is, it has the least number of surviving ancient copies and manuscript fragments. Thus, as recently as 2012, New Testament scholar Peter M. Head wrote, The paucity of manuscripts alongside the relative absence of information about the text of Mark in the early period is something that distinguishes the text of Mark from that of the other three canonical Gospels. Happily, in 2018, the Egypt Exploration Society published, in the journal Oxyrhynchus Papyri, a fragment of the Gospel of Mark designated 5345, prepared by Dirk Obink and Daniela Colomo. The fragment, dated from the 2nd or 3rd century, lay in a storage box after it was brought to the UK in 1903 by Grenfell and Hunt, who had uncovered it in an ancient rubbish dump in Oxyrhynchus, Egypt. The editors of the Novum Testamentum Grace, a scholarly version of the Greek New Testament, have assigned to this fragment the designation Papyrus 137, which will be cited in future editions. Although the fragment contains only a few words of Mark chapter 1, it helps scholars to confirm several points of interest. Copies of the Greek Gospel of Mark were already circulating internationally in the 2nd and 3rd centuries CE. In spite of minor transcriptional variations, the text substantiates that presented in better preserved 4th century documents such as Codex Sinaiticus. By the 3rd century CE, New Testament scribes had begun employing abbreviations for sacred names, nomina sacra. The Holy Spirit was already considered a divine person whose title is abbreviated as a nomen sacrum, or sacred name. More importantly, the space presumed on the recto side of the page, above the preserved lines of the fragment, would imply an opening text of Mark of very similar length to that witnessed in the Codex Sinaiticus, contrary to the proposals of Karl Lachmann and others that some of these verses, especially verses 2 and 3, might be later intrusions. The text preserved in Papyrus 137 reads as follows. Red indicates whole letters, green incomplete letters, and black presumed text. After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. 
and immediately they left their nets and followed him. Just as all authentic biblical manuscripts have proven subject to copyists' errors, so too this tiny scrap of scripture contains some textual variants that help scholars to reconstruct the original wording of Mark's Gospel, to wit. The title, Holy Spirit, at verse 8, is shortened from Pneumati to Pe Nun Iota, as a nomen sacrum, divine name. The preposition N is found neither before water nor before Holy Spirit, which terms occur in the dative case having the same function as N. The name Jesus is omitted, although the verbs occur in their third-person singular form, referring to Jesus in the preceding verses. This fragment of the Gospel of Mark currently resides at the Sackler Library in Oxford, UK. Come see it.